Hey guys, in this video, we'll see how to use Superbase services while creating a Flutter app. So this is our app mode tracker. We build this app during the Flutter hackathon. We first input our email here. We now click the sign in button and it sends us the login link or our email. We copy this link from our email, paste it inside the Safari browser. So we click on open. And yes, we are logged in inside the app. Once we sign in using the magic link, our user gets created in the authentication database of Superbase. Let's click on the setting icon here. It shows us the account details of our profile. We can upload a new photo and let's say we click on this. The new image has been uploaded. We can display the data from Superbase by clicking on calendar. And since there is no data for today, it shows nothing. We click on that we are feeling good today and we can see that the moon is logged for good today. We create a normal Flutter project using Flutter Create. To integrate Superbase in our project, we first need to have a Superbase account. In case you don't have, be sure to check out the video here. We are using Superbase database, auth and storage. In the database, we have a table called mood tracker wherein we store the user moods. The other table profiles is used for storing the user information. This is how the mood tracker table looks like. We have updated at the user ID as well as the date at which the mood was inserted. The other table profiles as currently our profile information like username, the uploaded photo and the ID of the person. In order to allow sign up via email, we enable the email auth provider. We can also customize the duration before an OTP link expires. There are some out of box templates for this email type and then we can also customize as per our requirement. We also set up the redirect URL inside our apps. We can see that in the Android manifest, we see we have the same schema and host. We also have the URL schema to the same value as put in the dashboard. We install the package Superbase Flutter. And as mentioned in the snippet here, we need to initialize Superbase before using it. And then these values will come from your project details. We install the package Superbase Flutter. We initialize our Superbase client using initialize. Our project is based as per the MVVM architecture. It has its own view, view model. All the services are present inside the services folder. For instance, image picker, superbase, etc. In the login screen, we listen to the authentication changes using a stream subscription. This gets the latest auth state, which basically is a class comprises of auth change event as well as session. Based on the session value, we determine if the user is authenticated or not. We create a text controller which only accepts a valid email. Once the email is validated, we call in the login function. This login function internally calls the Superbase service sign in method. And inside this method, we call in the function sign in with OTP. This function takes in the email and the redirect link. As we can see here, this is the same value which we saw in the code. We put in our email and click on sign in button. It should send us an email for login link. And yes, we received the login link. The next time we log into our app, we see a splash screen. We call in a method redirect after auth in the splash screen. We check if the current session of the user is null or not. Let's look into the home screen now. In the init state, we call in the fetch profile function as well as get code. This get code function calls its repositories get code, which internally calls in a public API. And inside the fetch profile, we call in the superbase service get profile function queries the Postgres table profiles, as we can see in the dashboard here. It gets the detail for the profiles matching with the user ID as this is done by calling the select function from the Superbase client. The data is returned back in the form of a map. This is then converted to a user profile model. This model looks something like this. It has a JSON ID and these values are nothing but the column names of the table profiles. We surround this function with a Postgres exception and the final model is returned back. And based on the values we fetched from the Postgres table, we display the username. We log in our mood for today by clicking on any emoji. Internally, this mood emoji calls in a function update mood. 
And in this update mood function, we basically create a mood entry. So this mood entry is a model based on the values inside the table mood tracker. As we can see in the dashboard here, this is how the mood entry model looks like. So it has the values like ID updated at mood type, which match the exact column names from the table mood tracker. Next, we pass in the model to the Superbase service update mood function. This function upserts the data into the mood tracker table and returns back a boolean if the operation was successful. This upsert comes in from the Superbase client and performs an upsert into the table. We click on any emoji, let's say sad, so it says mood logged, which next we go to the calendar screen by clicking this button. We select any date and it fetches the records for that particular date. We call a function fetch mood records, which takes in the date from and date to parameters. In this fetch mood records, internally it calls the Superbase service fetch mood records and passes the same parameters. Inside this function, we get the values from the table mood fetcher. These constraints, GTE, which stands for greater than equal to, used for fetching the column names or the values greater than or equal to to the specified value. And the same LTE or the less than equal to gets the values less than or equal to to the specified value. We get a response back, which is then converted into a list of mood entries. These list values are then shown here in coming back to the home page. We can also visit the profile screen. So this is our profile screen inside the function init state. We first call in fetch profile method. This fetch profile method internally calls the Superbase service get profile. This get profile does the same thing wherein it gets the current user ID. It fetches the table profiles and gets the value equal to the user ID. For updating the username, we call in the view model update username function. Inside this update username function, we first create a user profile model. We get the ID equal to the user profile ID, the updated at as now, and the username to be equal to the one which the user enters. We call the Superbase service update profile function. This function internally calls in the profiles Postgres table and upserts the new profile. So as of now, the username which is saved is Dazzlers. We let's say we update the username. If we refresh this page, we see the new username to be the one which we specified here. The user can also upload a profile photo by clicking on this upload photo function. So inside this function, we first call the image picker service. We need to install a package called as image picker. So this is the package which we have installed for him. The user selects the file from the gallery. We call in the Superbase service upload binary function. This function takes in the file name, bytes and the image file. Inside our Superbase project, we already have a bucket created called as avatars. So this bucket will host the user profile pics. So let's see this upload binary function. Inside this function, we call in the storage from the Superbase client and mention the bucket to be avatars. We call the function upload binary and pass in the parameters as file path, bytes and image file. It uploads a binary file to an existing bucket, which we, we call in the storage again and create a signed URL and give it an expiry of let's say 10 years. This create sign URL function creates a URL which allows us to download file without requiring any permissions. In the upload photo function, we create a user profile model wherein we pass in generated signed URL. Let's see this in action. So we click on the upload photo. It shows up a gallery. So next we select this photo. This gets uploaded into Superbase storage and if we go back we can see that the profile pic has been changed. And finally, the user can choose to sign out. We call in the function sign out and inside this function, we call in the Superbase service sign out. Inside this function, we call the auth.sign out and what this does is it signs out the current user if there is a logged in user.